Hey YouTube, Audi Olympian here, back with another video coming to you from outside Audi Olympia. So today's video, we're gonna do a real quick home theater tour. I haven't done this in a while, and I've done some upgrades to the system and to the room, so I wanted to refresh that as I've had some subscribers in the past few videos here asking some questions on what my system's like and the setup of my room. So thought since I've done some upgrading, we got some new things in here, Let's do a quick home theater tour so I can show everybody. So come on, let's check it out. All right, so we'll start with the brains of the system here. Keep in mind, everything that you see here is DIY. I do it all myself because I like doing it, I enjoy it, I like the challenge, and it's a lot less expensive that way. So, starting with the processor, we have the AVM70 from Anthem, and that thing is a monster, I really love it. The AVM70 is, is plenty for me and my room size and it gives me 15 channels. I mean, yeah, if we could have 21 channels, why not? But 15 is well more than enough uh, to really get a good feel of the Atmos experience, DTSX, you know, all the immersive sound. And I'm running Emotiva amplifiers. If you watch some of my other videos, you see on my front stage here, it is, um, I'm running three XPA2s and I bridge those so that they're rated at a thousand watts each. I made my own little stands here. They're not the prettiest, but they are functional because these amplifiers are about 80 plus pounds each on this end. So definitely needed something pretty sturdy here uh, to be able to hold all that weight. And then I threw the other two amplifiers on top here for my extra channels. This is a two channel XPA 200, and I use those for my front wides, which are up there in the top corner. And then this is an XPA 100, which is just running one of my other channels. My Oppo 4K player, my Furman. This is uh, the power conditioner I'm using for everything. And then my other Emotiva amplifiers. So let's go to the front stage. Triton reference towers for my fronts. Goldnear Triton, or Goldnear reference center, XXL center reference. There's the other one. SVS PB16 and the Goldnear XXL subwoofer. Now the Tritons, if you're not familiar with the Goldnear, these are powered because, are, so they have powered subwoofer section in there so basically across my whole front stage here i'm running four powered subwoofers kind of um, these are the two main ones and then i do have my tritons um, spliced in there i have splitters on the on the back end now if you watched my other video where i talked about the xlr versus rca cable on the svs because that has xlr input and output, which is amazing. I love the, uh, the feature that SVS puts in their high-end models. But that was a huge, huge difference for me. It made a major difference in my low-end and bass response here. So front wides up here, front heights right up here. I'm using the 
Optima UHD 60. This was the first um, 4K projector that Optima came out with. And I like it. I still, I've had this now for maybe mm, four or five years now, somewhere around there when it first came out. And it still shows really, really great picture. Um, it's never let me down. I really enjoy it. So I believe you can get that at kind of a discounted price now uh, from when it first came out. So if you're looking for a good 4K projector, I would recommend the Optima UHD 60. It's one of the first models. Actually, it might even be discontinued now. You wouldn't be able to get it from them. I think you'd have to buy it like uh, secondhand. So on the resale market there. So there is another speaker over off to that side. Then I'm going to go right to the back for our rear stage. Now I was running my BRXs up here and I switched those out because I'm doing something in my listening room a little bit here, just playing around with the system. So I put the um, satellite S3s up here, the SAT3s here, the golden ear. And these actually sound really, really good up here. These, the, uh, the thing I like about these is these don't have any base radiators inside of them. So they're a little bit more higher range than the rest of the speakers. And it blends perfectly here with my Triton Golden Ear 5s. And then I do have the Super Sub X. That's the little brother of the XXL that we have up front. And then up here we have our other rear heights. And then finally, the final one over here. Seating, these are theater seats. I believe I just purchased these from a local furniture store here in my area, which is called Godwin's Furniture. I don't believe that's nationwide. Could be just here in Michigan in my state and maybe a few other Midwestern states around here, but I got these for around uh, 700 a piece. They are powered. I wasn't able to, I, did, I bought them at different times. Again, DIYer, right? So I didn't get a full matching set. If you can kind of tell, one is black and one is gray. They're the exact same model, uh, just a different color. So I had to kind of purchase what was left there. But they are powered. I do like that, so they will recline. Riser here I built myself and just kind of um, put some carpet tiles on the top. I do need to paint the finish that and paint the base of it just so it gives it a little better aesthetic look. But we'll get around to that when it's necessary. And then theater seat, this is a theater sofa that was kind of the set to that. It was more of the uh, newer model so you can kind of see the stitching looks very similar the style looks very similar to those seats um, it's not exact but again I got it from the same place it works out really well the um, seats do recline here and I want to say this might have been 900 for the sofa here okay so that's my basic setup there um, just to go a little bit more into the awkwardness of my room, there is no drywall in here. Uh, I put a makeshift wall up to kind of cover around the uh, furnace because I knew as soon as the base and hard explosions or, or deep LFE levels were going to hit that the furnace was going to shake unbearably and you're going to get that rattle. And that just, that kind of stuff drives me up the wall. It might not for you, but I know for me, I like it when my bass can hit really, really hard and I'm not hearing any rattling of anything of sorts. Now, sometimes you'll have bass that, that'll hit and maybe a door rattles or uh, pictures on the wall or something like that. That's not so much what I'm talking about. So one of the things that I thought of here is I got, as you can see, my red drapes and curtains that I have are pretty, pretty heavily um, densed and thick. And I do that just a little bit for the look. It was easy to put up, but mostly because down here uh, around the corners was just solid brick wall. And I didn't really, really want to spend the time because as soon as we moved in, for us cinephiles and audiophiles, the first thing you do when you move into a new place or relocate, you got to set your system up. You got to have your movies and music going. That's like 
against the rules if you don't the first night outside of a couple of other things you want to do in the house the first night, right? I didn't want to cover over the brick and do it very poor job, quick, fast job, because I just wanted to get my system up. Then I have walls rattling and stuff like that. So the brick is actually really, really good for sound isolation. So I thought, well, I'll just throw some curtains up. So that works really well for me. I had to put a little makeshift wall up, which I probably could have soundproofed and densed a lot more, which I still might because the the drapes and the curtains aren't actually soundproofing. They may sound dead in a little bit, but they definitely don't sound isolate. So I'm still gonna work a little bit on my walls here and get those a little bit more dense with some insulation and some other things there to try to really sound isolate as much as I can to keep my sound in the room. Now me, just like a lot of you guys, full DIYer. A lot of this I just did myself and I did very, I. I wouldn't say very inexpensive, but I try to do as inexpensive as I can. I like to stay within a budget. I always budget everything, but more importantly, I like to try to beat my budget at whatever I set it at. So if I'm gonna get a new speaker or anything like that, a new subwoofer, I'll set my budget and I'll take my time and I'll hunt and I'll look and I'll be patient to really try to beat my budget as much as I can. To me, that always just feels like a win-win, a double win. One, I got my new item, but then I get it at a really, really good cost. And that just feels like a win-win. Okay, that being said, I probably put in less than $1,000 to get my room up and running and if I want to put all, count all the hours and days and time up, maybe within a couple of weeks, I had everything up and running to what you see now. But that was stretched out over a few months, right? You know, you have to just put a little time into it wherever you can, a couple hours here, a few minutes here and there, right? And then start looking at things, ideas, what else do you want to do? So again, it's not totally finished by any means, still got some good work to do. Uh, but le for less than $1,000, I want to say more closer to probably seven to 800. I got some dressing up, some room treatments. You may not be able to see back here, but I do have some sound deadening uh, pads up on the wall there because this is straight brick wall right behind the screen. So I have that a little sound deadened, not necessarily isolated, but the brick does a good job of doing that. All around the side here, build a couple of walls and all that for under a thousand dollars. I have good length in my room and that's about 27 feet and I'm not overpowered by my front stage because I'm far enough back and I'm closer to all the surround speakers but I'm also not overwhelmed by all the surround speaker sound because my front stage is strong and again that length of my room. Rectangle is going to be your best option you have for a home theater room. Now again we got to work with what we have. Well, what's the sense of having anything good or great if it doesn't sound very good? And a lot of that is gonna to have to do with your room, not necessarily your gear or your speakers or whatever you have. Um, of course, that will play, that will, don't get me wrong, that is gonna be a major um, factor there. However, even if you have a $100 pair of speakers today, you can make those sound great in a really good room with other good components. Everything sounds pretty good today, and that's a good thing. So it, you can get good, amazing sound at all budgets. So overall, how does it sound, right? That's the most important thing. Well, let's take a look. We'll check out some clips here. Now I know you're not gonna get the full effect of what I'm getting here, but after some of the clips here, I'll talk a little bit about what I was getting and what I got out of the sound. This one is one of my favorite discs. It's my one of my original that I received a long time ago that I got called The Sound of High Definition. This is purely Dolby Digital 5.1 and 7.1. So let's check it out. So let's check out another one here. Yeah, just amazing. I love that sound quality, the impact. It definitely doesn't disappoint. Now, the cool thing here 
again that was Adobe Digital Plus which I believe is at 7.1 so I'm still getting rear height sound rear surround and side surround so if you have good um, build quality in your room you're gonna get sound that sounds like it's coming from above just like Atmos I mean it, it's not gonna be as direct obviously but the sound does pass over me so it's still quite immersive and engaging so that's pretty exciting to know okay starting here with the classic traditional Atmos trailer and let's start it Okay, those clips for me are just amazing. I love just being able to sit back and listen and watch that and enjoy different sounds, different clips, different um, energy and movement going in. Some of those clips are Dolby Digital, some of them are DTS, Atmos, DTS-X, and all the sound just sounds spectacular. I enjoy all of those formats there. Now, leading into the next up and coming video that I have here. The sound and the agility is great. Again, I'm running a thousand watts on my front channels or my front stage for each one of these, so 3,000 watts up front. The rest of my speakers on the Emotiva amplifiers I have are either 200 watts per channel or 250. The ones that I have that are a two channel amp are running at 150. Those are, I have those more as my height ones. That way, if there isn't much height activity, I'm really not missing much. I do find that you'd get way more better and much more activity out of your bass layer, which uh, whether you're running a five channel or a seven channel for your bass, I have a seven channel. So that's where I made sure all of those speakers for my surrounds are running at 200 or 250 watts. And those are all set on individual amplifiers themselves. So. Um, mono blocks. None of those are a stereo amplifier, just in my uh, height channels. Okay, so that's about all I have for this video here, guys, and we'll see you on that one. Without sound, there is no understanding, no emotion or truth. Images are simply that. At DTS, we believe that sound changes the way we see. It tells the story. It gives life. All you have to do is listen.